Hey guys, what's up? This is JRP77 from JG Games, and I'm going to be concluding my tutorial series in an introduction into Blender. Now, in the first tutorial, we learned about the interface, learned how to navigate, and how to add objects and edit them with the edit mode. Sorry. In the next tutorial, we learned about the differences between the Blender internal rendering engine and the Cycles engine for when making art and stuff like that. Then, the no then in the third tutorial, we learned about the node editor and that we learned how to make some materials. So sh I showed some materials found on blendermata.com and some really cool materials. And this tutorial is kind of like a mini series. It's going to be on the Blender game engine. That's why I did all those before on how to make materials and how to navigate, was so that we could build um, somewhat of a game inside of Blender. Now in the first tutorial, we're going to be making a very simple game, and I'm going to be explaining the, um, how to make things. And then the next tutorial, I'm going to explain how to export it, and use it, and do stuff like that. So without further ado, let's open up Blender. Now, I actually had to backtrack to 2.73, um, because for some reason, it got um, 2.74 got deleted. So this is a brand new project, and there's nothing on there, no materials. So we're going to switch over to the blend, to, um, not cycles, blender game. Now you'll see we have some different options over here. And one of the different options that I was a little not impressed with was we have to use the exact same um, material editor as um, blender internal. So that's a downside and we can't really make complex materials like we did and um, cycles but it's it's okay I mean we can deal with that so there we have the same lay layout but we need to get to where we can like edit some game object so first I'm going to move the camera by hitting zero on the numpad or my zero key then I'm gonna go over here I'm gonna open this up and then I'm going to go to a lot camera to view. Now you'll see it puts this red outline, and this actually allows me to move the camera around. I'm going to move it to about right here, and I am going to zoom out. Now you'll notice that we have some funky rotation, so I'm going to fix that by going up here and zeroing out the different rotations. Now we do have one issue, and that's this. This is at 91, we want this at 90. And I'm just gonna move around to where that's in the center. So now we want to be able to get to where we can play around with this. I'm f but first, make sure you unlock the camera to view. So now I'm going to go in here, and I'm gonna hit start. And that does absolutely nothing. And that's one reason is because we have a crummy lighting. So I'm gonna delete this, and I'm going to add a sun. Now I'm just going to leave that alone. And I believe I'm underneath the sun now. So we're going to move that up. We still have really bad lighting. I don't know why I have bad lighting, but I'm going to bump up the intensity of the sun by going over to this light. I'll bring that up. Then I'm going to go back to rendering embedded player. Actually, I'm going to rotate this on the X 90 degrees and then move this down to the position of the camera. So I'm just going to copy these values and paste them. Now I'm going to copy this Y. This might take a while. And this is just the way I know how to do it. So now it's right on there. So now if I hit zero and I hit play, there we go. We have good lighting. So now, what do we do now? We want to make a basic game. So I'm going to go, I'm actually going to zoom in on the scene view a little bit. I remember I can't because I'm in that. I'm going to zoom into about like right there so we can see the entire thing. And I'm going to go up to this layout and I'm going to change it to game logic. Now you'll see it goes off of there, but I'm just going to move it back to the camera. Now the camera is very important because you can be off of the camera view when you're editing the game, but as soon as you um, export it, it goes to that camera. So, there's three different types of things we have. We have a cube, um, this is just our object. Then we have the sensors, the controllers, and the actuators. Now, basically visual, now this is all visual, but you can add scripting up here. It's really cool. So, first I'm gonna add a sensor. 
we want to tell, and basically what a sensor is, is what triggers this event. So I'm going to say keyboard, and then the key, I'm going to hit D. I'm going to name the, and you can actually name all of these, and you can change them at any time. I'm going to change this to um, move right. Then I'm going to set this to um, just tap, I guess. So you can actually set them to tap or to level, so that's cool. Then I'm, I'm just going to keep it on tap, though, because I don't want it to go off the screen. Actually, I will, just to show you. Then we need a controller. Now, these are cool because an and controller, um, basically, so there's one thing I need to explain. Node editors in Blender are weird because they've designed the two node editors differently. Um, the game engine editor, you can have as many inputs as you want. So you can, like in the node editor, where you can have all these inputs. So like you could have the D key do like hundreds of things, but then you can also have as many outputs as you want. You can have all of these outputs go to different things. So it, that's you cannot do that in the node editor. Each output can only have. Correction: We have multiple inputs, unlike the node editor. So we can have as many inputs and as many outputs as we want. So the AND controller basically means if we had uh, another one, like let's say we had spacebar, and then we put that in there. Both of these keys have to be pressed down for this to happen. So that's a disadvantage, but you can change this to OR, and that's the second most popular. So that just means that if one of these is pressed, then do this action. Then we have the NAND, which is not AND, NOR, which is not OR, um, ZOR, and I don't know the rest of them. But we can, and you can even have expressions, so that's cool. I'm going to keep it on AND for now. Then I'm going to go to actuators. Now, we, are go we want this guy to move right, so motion in Blender Game Engine is a bit weird, but you get the hang of it pretty quickly. You're not telling it where to go, you're telling it which direction for it to be pushed at. So... For example, actu if I go to add actuator, well, it's actually it's more like it's the speed. So you want it to move. So like we could say I'm gonna say 0.5 on the x and 0.5 on the y, just to give you an example. Actually, no, not on the y. We want this on the z. That's the weird thing about Blender is that everything is inverse. The y-axis is going out and the x and the z-axis is going up. However that works. So then I'm just going to connect these and hit start and then you'll see that if I hit D we start going up. And that can be a cool thing but most of the time you just want each key to move in one direction. So I'm going to hit Z. I'm going to hit zero. Alright, so now you'll see that we can, if I hit I forgot how to play it, sorry. Now we can just move, but the difficulty is we can't actually move several ways. So I'm going to add another one by adding another keyboard, this time A. And I'm actually going to delete the name here just to... Um, I'm going to change this to D and this to A. Just so we have the different inputs, so we know which input button. And then on here, I'm going to say move right. So I can show you guys something really cool about the image. I'm going to add another and. I'm going to add another motion. Now, in this motion, I'm just going to say negative 0.5 because there is no reverse. So we want it to go this way because this is positive and this is negative. If you look right, um, if I hit G, I can show you. If you look like right down here by where it says DX, where my mouse is, I can't actually go there, but you get the idea. That's where all the numbers are. So negative is that way, positive is that way. So now that we have that, I'm going to connect all of these. And then we will be able to play. So I'm going to hit the embedded player start. And if I hit A and D, you can see we move left and right. And that's really cool, but it's a tad fast. So let's make it a little bit slower on both of these. Uh, I'm going to make it 0.25. You wouldn't have ever something moving that quickly unless it was really big. So I'm going to set this to 0.25 and negative 0.25. Alright, so that's cool. I'm going to change this name to move left. So now that we have this, 
we have that. And that's cool. I mean, we could do that with a few lines of code in um, Unity. And, yeah, that's cool. But there's a few things that are a bit confusing about the Blender game engine. And there's one thing that's really nice. And there's one thing. And that is, you could have... So now we could say... A, this is an and controller, we could say A has to be pressed with D and A to move right. So now if I play, sorry, I hit D, nothing happens. As soon as I hit A, nothing happens either because it's contradicting two movements. So it's a little bit like that. The if statements, well, the system is a little bit buggy, but you get used to it. But a cool thing is we can actually know if something's happening from here. Because you want to say you wouldn't want something to say, like maybe we don't want a button to be pressed or a joystick to be moved. What if we wanted if something like this happens? We can actually add an actuator to here. And I'm just gonna call this um, if move left. And then I'm gonna select the move left. Then we can pass this through an AND controller. And then we can go over here and we could have something happen. For example, we could have um, the camera. Um, we can do stuff with the camera. We can also do stuff with the mouse. We can change it. So we could also say um, visibility. And so now. I'm also going to make another actuator, and I'm going to give this the move right. And I'm going to say if move right. It's very handy to have this where you can name stuff because that helps a ton. I'm going to push this through here, and so that it's not an um, and or, I'm going to say. Um, so that both of these have to be happening. I'm going to say or, especially since we're dealing with motion. Now, if I hit play. The mass is already gone, but you can see it's pretty cool. But you see the mouse is actually still there. And we can actually say if we want the mouse to be visible. So I'm going to change this to where it's not visible. Then if I play. And it's a lot of different things like you could say look. And I don't actually know what that does, but... Oh. Huh. That's cool. Cool little thing. But you'll notice that now we're moving towards the camera. And that's because everything is local. I'm going to change this off of local. So that now this is just moving in world space. So now that we have that look, I can go to embedded player. Move. And I can move all these wherever I want. Now, I'm actually going to change this if it's moving left, but that was just an example. I'm going to change this to always. So you have always, and then if I press this, then wherever I move the mouse, it should do that. But right now it's not working because always is not being triggered for some apparent reason. Huh, weird. All kinds, but there's all kinds of things like that, and that's really cool. Now, let's. There is a bunch of difficulties because not everything you can do with, um, um, well, you can't ever, you can't do everything with, um, visual scripting. Even though it has improved, you just can't do everything. So, but there is this. There is a Python controller. Now you'll notice it does have an output, but we could say. Um, if mouse, and we could say something like mouse, um, just movement in general, we could pass this through a script and then pass this into another thing. So that's another controller you can use is to run it through a script. You can also run it through a module. You can run it, I don't know what modules are, but you can run it through a script. Now, that's why it's handy to have this this window up here this is the text editor now we don't have any scripts up here but if i create a new one you'll see we automatically get the text editor where we can type stuff like hi and other stuff but this is reserved specifically for format so i'm going to go i'm going to go to python and i'm going to create um just a game logic 
This is just a basic game logic script. And I'm going to go to here, and now we have this. So now, I'm not exactly sure what this does. That's what I'm looking at, but it's just one of these. I think this is just a test. So now, pass this into right there, and if we start, now we can look around. And you'll see that because it's the sun, you can't really tell, but we can look around. And so we can distort the cube and do all kinds of cool things, like with shapes and lots of very cool things that you can't do with this. So that was an introduction into the Blender game engine. Um, in this one, we learned about actuators, sensors, and controllers, not specifically in that order. And we also learned how to add scripts to be used in everything. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.